Hello everyone. Welcome to our session. I am with you. And I have a good number of panelists with me as well in this session. Uh, our cordial welcome that you have been so amazing. You have supported us throughout the whole day. We have two more sessions left for today. Hopefully you will support us again. In, now we, we are going to talk about pivoting and digitizing the old business models. As you know that being an entrepreneur, you need to have the change in nature in your venture. With this technology, we need to adapt with the change. Otherwise, it will be very, very difficult for us to survive in the market. Even the traditional business models, they are getting pivoted day by day. But how to do this? When to do this? We'll be learning about these things from our powerful panelist sessions. For this, we have with us a great number of panels. First of all, I would like to introduce my panelists with you guys. We have Larissa Miller, founder and CEO, Phoenix Global LLC. Hello, Larissa. Hi there. Thank you for having me today. It's absolutely yeah. a pleasure to be here. Next, we have Sadia Lakehal, founder and CEO, Imperia Industries. Hello, Sadia. Hello, thank you so much for the invitation. And we have with us Ahlam Janehi, President, Bahrain Business Women Society. So let's welcome our great panelists. Okay, so first of all, I would like to invite my panelists to introduce themselves with our audience because they have to know who you are and how you are actually impacting in the society, starting with Risa Miller. Hi there, thank you for having me so much today. Um, I am Larissa Miller, CEO of Phoenix Global, which is a global consulting and investment firm. Uh, looking at uh, projects and working with clients on, on six continents. Um, I'm an advocate for entrepreneurship, specifically among, amongst women, and have spent considerable time over the last few years working with women in developing nations um, to really be able to um, um, empower them and, and support their independence, but also to encourage the familial economic sustainability within their own households, but also to help governments and heads of state recognize that women as entrepreneurs play a critical role in the economic development for the country as well. So I'm pleased to be here today and to, to talk about this very important topic about digitizing the future of, of business for entrepreneurs. Thank you, Larissa. Now, can I have the introduction from Sadia Lakehal? Thank you, Yuti. Sadia Lakal, I'm a CEO and founder of Emporia Industry Connect, uh, President Founder Global Women in Manufacturing Summit, author Women in Manufacturing Magazine, and Partner International Member, Global Women Leader, and Global Agritech in WBF. Um, uh, my mission as a uh, company, Emporia Industry Connect, is uh, to have been uh, propon or promote Canadian industry to the international scene. And uh, with uh, uh, experience uh, in the sector manufacturing and uh, approve the competitive positive and uh, the level of uh, competitive on uh, manufacturing and support committed uh, to mobilize projects to the topics and uh, the topics are socio-economy, environment, and human industry. And uh, very interesting uh, by the place and impact of women in the industrial sector, I initiated the Global Women Manufacturing and the magazine. So my job is to facilitate uh, and promote networking on the development of business opportunities between manufacturing companies and the experts of the smart industry through the international and the cultural and industry connection and economies delegation. 
So the company is about to support industry in digital transformation, also create, manage, and employ global events dedicated on the manufacturing sector in order to promote the industry of tomorrow and its various trade and digital and age AA. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sudhir. Now I can have the introduction from Ahlam Jenehi, the president of Bahrain Businessmen Society. Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, everybody. Thank you for uh, inviting me with you. Uh, I am the president Ahlam Jenehi from Bahrain, president of Bahrain Businesswomen Society. Uh, Bahrain with Businesswomen Society established since 2000. Uh, we are celebrating this year our 20th uh, anniversary. Uh, our members, uh, they are very active uh, in Bahrain. Uh, we have a different level of uh, activities. Uh, we have uh, SMEs, uh, startup entrepreneurs, and big companies with uh, uh, um, big family businesses. Uh, our aim is uh, to empower uh, Bahraini business women uh, economic, uh, locally, and globally. And uh, we have a uh, relationship and MOU signed with around uh, 45 entities locally and internationally. Uh, we are uh, people who like to uh, advocate for Bahraini women to reach to higher position, decision-making positions uh, in Bahrain, uh, to reach uh, to the board uh, of the private companies and uh, semi-governmental companies. Uh, we've been supported by our first lady, Princess Sapika bint Ibrahim, uh, through uh, Supreme Council for Women. Uh, they support all Bahrainis in Bahrain, all Bahraini women in Bahrain, and we are lucky to have uh, our government under leadership of our, our king, uh, as we receive a lot of support for women empowerment in Bahrain. Thank you. And of course, my business is uh, my so business. Thank you so much. Michelle has joined already as a panelist to our session to invite her to introduce herself with our audience. Thank you so much, Beauty. Really lovely to join everybody here. It's very, very exciting to, to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, apology for joining a bit late. I was on another session, on another conference. Uh, it's so exciting to be here. So my name is Michelle Chuvunga uh, Sanzumucho, and I run my own uh, blockchain and digital transformation fintech. Uh, here in the UK, but our, our fintech is very, very global. It's not just focused in, in the UK. Uh, we're very focused on emerging markets, um, you know, including Africa. Uh, and one of our passions at, uh, at the Global Policy House is really to support a lot more women, um, you know, with digital skills and to help equip more women with digital skills and access to information around things like data, artificial intelligence, blockchain, cybersecurity. Uh, we're very, very passionate about women's empowerment. Uh, I think this is, a, you know, a, an opportunity for all global women around the world uh, to be empowered to actually uh, achieve what they want to, to, to do in their lives and to actually encourage more young girls to participate in STEM. It's very, very exciting, um, you know, and, and, and uh, at the Global Policy House as well, we also, you know, facilitate access to financing uh, for small businesses as well. Thank you very much for having me here. Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. Uh, now I would like to go to the main session of the program. Uh, we were going to talk about why do we need to pivot? Because you know that uh, there are some traditional businesses, they cannot cope up and they actually fall behind from the market. So it's very to pivot your business according to the market need. So how a business should know about when and why should they pivot and what are the advantages a business will get for pivoting, starting with Larissa. Uh, Larissa, can you please unmute yourself? All right. The when to pivot is absolutely now. We're at the... Uh, sitting on the precipice of a very new and transformational era, um, accelerated by the changes that we've had given in our global business environment and the shift to a more online presence. 
um, the why to pivot is, you know, those who are sitting back, those businesses that are sitting back, licking their wounds, waiting for this time to return to normal, are those who are going to find themselves in the back of the pack. You know, we can't go back to normal because normal was clearly the problem. So it's going to be those companies that recognize that now is the time to per perhaps discard the legacy business models that we've been following and move ahead in a new and, and transformational and innovative and progressive manner. Um, technology enhances everything that we do. Right now we see that companies have, have a designated hundreds of millions, even billions of dollars into making sure that their employees who are now working remotely have the technology they need, have the connectivity they need, have the cybersecurity they need, to be able to perform during this very, um, this very disruptive time period. And committing all that money to make sure that we can be connected when things do go back to normal, whatever that looks like, we're going to find that many businesses will prefer to stay in this particular um, lane as we move forward. You know, it wouldn't make sense to have put all this money into a digital connectivity only to, to discard it to bring everybody back to an in-person engagement again. So we have to recognize that technology is going to drive business for the way forward, but even for a small business, a micro enterprise, and an entrepreneur, we have to now recognize that our community, our customers are no longer within our local radius we now have access to the world. So the world is our global marketplace and that depends on technology being present and front and center in our new business models. So thank you, Larissa. Uh, you have talked about the small businesses and the changing nature of the, the businesses. If I ask the same question to our next speaker, Sadia Lakehal, you are the owner of Empyrea Industries. So when did you feel that I have to pivot my business or is there any pivoting or digitizing model in your business or not? Thank you so much. Uh, exactly, the question is interesting uh, to motivate this. Uh, it was uh, about uh, uh, to listen the, the, about the customer we have. And uh, I started by uh, listening the needs because I'm going to uh, to visit uh, more than 10 manufacturing in my day and see uh, that the challenges and what I can bring as solution because, you know, uh, now it's uh, about uh, uh, to connect uh, with the customers and uh, to adapt their needs and to have the solution. So this is what uh, I did uh, because uh, with networking I have and what have uh, as uh, troubles uh, in, uh, in the industry of the future, you know, the technology now are with the fourth revolution, we need to, uh, to pivot to that uh, and uh, COVID-19 came with this uh, emergency to switch uh, in this uh, industry of the future. So it was uh, very important to society all this manufacturing uh, through uh, networking, uh, global events uh, to connect uh, people through the world, what's happening uh, overseas and here to prepare the future and to prepare also the generation. So uh, it's about the activities I pivot for that and give the solution and they are attending for that. So I know that uh, the manufacturing is uh, since years, uh, it's uh, the same, uh, I think, uh, situation in the overall world because it's coming in a few days or few months or few years, but with the situation crisis, it's an emergency to adapt and to, to switch because everything is changing on the, on the uh, clients, clients, employees, everything is changing with the new industry. Thank you, Sadia. Now I would like to go to Michelle, you, as you are in the blockchain industry. So how, what do you think about the, uh, the technology, how technology actually influencing the businesses to be pivoted or for the digitizing model? Sure, thank you so much, uh, Beauty. Yes, I think technology is playing a massive role, uh, you know, to enable businesses to actually innovate and to pivot and and like the um my fellow panelists just said uh, i think if you're, you're a business that is sitting on the sidelines 
are not ready to, to embrace or even start to understand how these technologies are, are you know, changing our world, then you're certainly going to be left behind or you're going to find yourself chasing after uh, innovation. And innovation as we know it is changing rapidly, you know, at lightning speed. Uh, you know, I sometimes go back, even though I'm in the industry, sometimes go back and, and check with my colleagues, like, oh, God, what's the latest, right? So it's a constant evolving, changing uh, a dynamic that I think businesses really need uh, to keep up to pace. But in terms of looking at it from a pivoting angle, uh, you know, I think time is now to pivot, but you can also continue uh, you can continuously look at pivoting and, and maybe what we call sprinting into different uh, phases uh, when, when, when change happens, when we're, we're living in a world where we can call it a you know, sort of very volatile and uncertain world uh, at the moment. And it's very, very difficult sometimes for businesses to make uh, decisions. But I think you know, with, your, with being adaptable and being able to pivot and change, that allows you to actually become a lot more innovative and creative. Uh, and I think being able to work remotely actually has presented some opportunities for businesses to start thinking differently and creating a culture where you're thinking differently and, and, and encouraging your employees. Uh, certainly for my, I, my company, we have been trying to encourage employees to start to think differently. And that is also creating a very new kind of culture. Uh, you know, we often don't talk a lot about culture. It's not just about the technology. Technology is an enabler. It helps you to do things a little bit more efficiently. It helps you to get from you know A to B. But without the culture, without the people-centric uh, uh, you know focus, then that makes it very very difficult to pivot and do that digital transformation that we want to see. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, you have pointed out the one of the right things that you need to have that culture in our organization for pivoting any business model. If I ask the same question to Ahalam Jenihi. Actually, can you say why and when we should pivot and how digital transformation actually impacting any organization? Yeah, uh, thank you, dear. Uh, to be successful, the business needs to continuously stay relevant and connected to its main core uh, vision. Just like professionals are always training themselves for, with uh, refreshing courses, on new development in their field. Businesses also must retrain themselves by adopting a new technology and new strategies and are relying uh, their vision regularly to their new goals. Uh, today, uh, in 21st century, market is dynamic and changing uh, changes rapidly. Uh, not only technology, but also the customers that we uh, serve and employees who help us to, deli to, to deliver on our promise. They all are affected by change. See how quickly we adopted Facebook and WhatsApp to our personal and official needs. Therefore, if we, need, if we have to uh, stay uh, ahead of a competition, we must be willing and able to vote. The key to effective voting, which is really another role for change managing, it is to research your change, plan your strategy, and implement carefully. Technology is a game changer and facilitator of voting. However, without careful research, planning, and implementation, even technology will not save a business. Why did Google classes fail? The technology was perfect on paper, but the market research was not right. But yes, technology puts your business ahead of the race when you, when you make it proper tool for progress. And if you ignore technology, business can fail faster. Thank you. Uh, so, so about the pivoting and digitizing our businesses. But uh, you know that uh, we need to know how, to, how does private or pivot actually work? So in this time, I'd like to ask you that, how to utilize technology? Is there any training required organization so that the other employees, those who are working, uh, working under your company, so do they need training for pivoting or digitizing your business model? 
Starting with Larissa. Well, they say that life never stops teaching, so we should never stop learning. And as with anything, you know, we must maintain our skills. We must always be open to learning new skills. And technology is accelerating more rapidly than any one of us can keep up, even those who work in the field of technology. So continuing personal development and professional development is, is critical to being able to infuse and get and get the maximum value from technology in our in our business chains. Um, you know, we have to be open and receptive to doing things differently. While we have to stay true to what our um, business lane is, whatever industry and sector we, we're in, we have to be brave enough to be able to step out of the box, um, look at new strategies, and um, and incorporate technology as a, an accelerant for our businesses. Because, you know, what technology can offer us can make us exponentially stronger, can make us exponentially more valuable, and make our strategies and our innovations much more progressive than all of our competitors in the same industries and sectors. If you're willing to change the model, um, embrace technology, and find the fractures in business that no one else are filling at the moment, you know, you will create a very unique and strong pathway for yourselves forward. So you will be the one that defines how your industry and sector moves into the future, and everyone else will be looking at you uh, as the example. Yes, uh, that's so true that you have to have that model uh, and you need to train others so that they can learn and they can, can share the knowledge with others and they can have the change in their business model. So on this same note, if I ask the same question to Sadia, so what does a successful digital transformation require in a business model? Thank you, dear. Our world is experiencing a digital transformation that is fundamentally renovating the customer experience. A bit linked to additional business models and operations and placing greater demand on network and cloud infrastructure, some requirements to meet these challenges and ensure a successful digital transformation is to connect with dots. There are three pillars to succeed in digital transformation about the journey network, evolution, digitization, business, and customer experience. And it's very important to integrate because uh, at finally, it's a quite integration of entrepreneurs' research planning, customer experience about uh, the platform uh, with uh, monetization and communication applications to connect uh, onto your business, people, process, and things to deliver successful digital service. And the very interesting is to provide the complete concept to catch to get customer experience. Because I'm looking about all this experience about the customer. Successful digital organization put customer experience at the center of every process and operation in their digital transformation journey. And uh, to deliver innovative develop, uh, digital service is innovation is critical in designing digital service. This can mean providing on all digital services or product as services enabled by digital channels. So take advantage of the last technology innovation that uh, set us high scale and uh, relying cloud uh, for mobility infrastructure platform, uh, AI uh, and blockchain are all part of ensuring a successful digital transformation journey, I think. Yes, we have got two points. First one was training and second one is that customer relationship. You have to give a good value to the customers, then your business model will work. So how actually evaluate these things? I want to know from Michelle. Sure. Um, in, in terms of e evaluation, I think just going back to the point around training, um, I think it's really significant. Uh, one thing we must not take advantage of, you know, is, is not everybody is digitally savvy. Not everybody, uh, you know, has uh, that knowledge of how to use digital. 
uh, in our businesses. So even within businesses, I think we have to be culturally aware that maybe not everybody might have the same speed of knowledge uh, around transitioning into the digital uh, uh, world. So I think it's very, very important on training that we invest a lot more uh, on training and educating and supporting people through this transformation. You know, the world actually pivoted overnight into the digital economy you know uh, so so that alone uh, you know shows you what happens when you pivot uh, it's it's very important that we continue to to support um, uh, you know employees to be able to understand how to move now the how uh, I think is very very important in order for you to actually build a digital transformation that is actually impactful in your business you have to look at a number of things including things like have you got the resourcing in place to to be even able to purchase uh, equipment. When the world went into the digital economy, how many companies actually invested in giving their employees, you know, sort of financing packages to get equipment at home uh, that is suitable for them to work from home? Uh, you know, how ready were businesses to enable um, employees to actually communicate with their fellow colleagues in order to be productive uh, at home? How are we measuring productivity? Uh, if this is all part of the whole digital transformation journey. The journey isn't just so much about tech, you know, or the IT infrastructure that's there. The IT infrastructure is slightly the easier bit. Uh, I, I think the more challenging is around, again, like I said, you know, the changes in culture, the resourcing, uh, you know, the processes and systems that have to come into play in order for you to implement a, a fully fledged uh, digital transformation that actually has impact. How do you measure? You measure this through, you know, the outputs that are coming out from your organization. If there's one um, influencer, so to say, that has had a major impact in terms of a company's digital transformation uh, in 2020 you have to say that COVID had a massive impact in terms of how companies are looking at uh, digital transformation. And COVID was the one that has steered a lot of companies to think again about how you know, we can look at digital uh, transformation. Uh, I still think a lot of companies are very early stage in, in terms of looking at the digital transformation. And that is why we are focusing a lot on the training and the education and the capacity building to support companies you know, through this journey because many are still at the very early stage of looking at a full-fledged digital transformation uh, strategy. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, you have also pointed about one thing that education is required apart from training, customer experience and education. So that's great to know that. So I would like to know from Ahlam Janehi, what is her opinion in this regard? Thank you. Uh, I want to answer in the content of today's panel discussion, promoting and digitalizing old business models. So the first part of this question, I believe we discussed and answered in the previous question. When we said that a pivot helps to refocus on a business and adopt a new uh, business's vision and strategy for all stakeholders. Digitalizing is a way of uh, framing the technology we want to use for our businesses. Again, it must not be confused with digiting, it is digitizing, which it is a technical method of running one office. Uh, if we embrace uh, digitalizing, then we can pursue different kind of opportunities, all made possible by a new technology. For changing uh, existing businesses model in the light of new technology, an air example, think of how we hire a taxi. We, uh, we use an app that has replaced the word taxi. We use Uber. We no longer make reservation in the hotel or for vacations. We book an air bump. Uh, Uber is a worldwide taxi service, but the company does not own any single taxi. Airbump uh, has the maximum number of rooms to book anywhere in the world, but not a single hotel. In Bahrain, we have the example of Talabat. You can order any menu, any cuisine, but the service is not a restaurant. Business can use technology to expand into new market, offer new product, and appeal to new customers. What does a successful digital transformation require? 
Uh, it requires a strict review of our businesses, our business models, our market requirements and expectations, and our competitions. Then we can decide which technology is the best suited to, uh, to, ha to have our uh, vision better in business growth. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ahlam. So my first uh, last question for this session is that as we have already talked about the few of the suggestions that you have talked about the pivoting and digitizing models so is there anything we can do from the government side or any measures should be taken from the private or public sectors or from the organization itself that is your suggestion that we can have for pivoting and digitizing our business model so starting with larissa Advocacy on a government level depends clearly on what nation it is that you're talking about, because we all have um, different levels of, of governance um, built in. You know, here in the United States, it's more or less done on a state-by-state -state basis. But, um, you know, the, the ability to infuse technology into business structure and a business model really belongs, the responsibility for that really belongs at the business level. And those that recognize that we are a very digitally um, directed future will be the ones that will be finding ways to bring technology into their supply chains, into their operations, into their human resources, making sure that their PR and marketing strategies, um, you know, aren't following the legacy ways that we've done it, but looking at really the progressive ways that we will be um, advertising our businesses again to a global market and um, it requires an open-mindedness it requires an ability to see the fractures um, it means that we have to make sure that you know as executives and leaders in a business that we recognize the value of our most important asset which is our employees to be turning to them to share their skills and knowledge and help to accelerate um, technology as a key cornerstone for our businesses and um, and really to be able to incorporate this is one of the key pillars in our operations. Yes, uh, thank you for mentioning one thing that we need technology in our supply chain, in our operation. So every operation should need to be revitalized so that we can have a new business model. Thank you so much for this great point. So Sadia Lakehal, any suggestion from you? Well, I think it's time to believe that the pilot can be a great success for more uh, COVID-19 have forced a pivot to digital first. Companies have one choice is to adapt a situation according to survey, but here in Canada, 55% of companies claim to have accelerated their digitization projects. So almost half report having changed their business model as majority have developed an innovation project and two third have changed their supply chain, especially to increase their local pressures. We have long been talking about uh, the importance to going digital for business as the current context is this uh, necessity. My recommendation is that we can see it's about uh, uh, to give the right information and uh, we know there's two things very interesting. The digital shift brings out an um, interesting change in employees' task. Technology is fundamentally changing the way work in the, is done and also to evaluate the customer journey as I mentioned and its digitalization because we, we follow what's happened with him. So pandemic has significantly changed the way brands engage with their customer brand and uh, until today the customer relation of many business model has really primarily of face-to-face -face interaction. People were at the heart of the style of products, of the uh, provision of services and uh, the crisis of uh, the crisis of COVID-19 uh, business closed before telecommunicating, and the rise of online commerce has drastically changed this dynamic. So I think we must further define uh, what can do. We ask ourselves the question to understand how do you 
customer want to be richest now? How have they changed in their consumers and habits? How do they come into contact with you now, uh, physically or virtually? So, and depending on their needs, how can I uh, can we contact points diversity city? So the need is to resume in a review business model is the process that can be broken down into the important stage. Entrepreneurs must think about the current situation, then after the COVID, and contain intelligent and process intelligent how we can also develop innovation, creative uh, to create and to imagine to develop or improve the e-commerce platform or invest in security IT on increased cloud. So, uh, so to adapt the situation of uh, uh, the future because it's time to think about. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sadia. Uh, uh, you have uh, mentioned that sometimes COVID is a blessing for us. Yes, we got to know how technology can help us in our business. So not only have negative things, but also we have some positive actual, actually. Exactly. So exactly. Michelle, would you like to recommend something for this? Sure, sure. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I think I definitely agree with my uh, panelists there. Uh, and I love the positivity. Uh, you know, us women tend to always look at the solutions and look to find uh, solutions, which is fantastic. Uh, you know, I, and I think in terms of, you know, we, we do need to look at having a, a growth mindset. Yes, we've had a massive challenge and we will continue to have massive challenges, you know, with, with sort of pandemics and other crises that might come into the fold. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, you know, as business uh, owners and CEOs, I think most CEOs will, will, will you know, agree with me that as, a, as leaders, we need to be able to have that growth mindset and to actually provide some motivation. Uh, at the moment, there's a lot of lack of motivation that's going on and it's even very, very difficult to motivate even your employees uh, when you're virtual, right? So there are some disadvantages of working remotely, uh, but at the same time, I think we can also be very, very productive. And one of the things that I have really enjoyed uh, within the digital uh, environment at the moment is actually the reach that we've had. Uh, so I don't even think I've been on so many platforms where I have spoken to so many people from across the world. Uh, that was not necessarily uh, the case, you know, before uh, COVID. You know, the fact that we can use these digital platforms is actually connecting and enabling a lot more inclusivity. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's a chance for us to start to rethink that, you know what, maybe the old, you know, normal will pave the way for us to create a very new normal, right? And that new normal that we want is, is, is something that we will need to shape and, and, and pave, uh, pave the way for. And part of the answer to that, yes, is technology. You know, we need to be actually leverage technology so that we can create new business models or improve the business models that we have. Uh, again, back to, to Sadia's point about, you know, making sure that we can uh, satisfy our customers, start to understand our customers better. We can leverage on new resources. You know, data is a new resource. Data is a very rich resource. If you have access to data, you're actually very rich, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, make sure yeah, you can capitalize the use of data. Uh, you know, and if you can use data to inform you about your customers, about your products, about your new markets and access to markets, why, why don't you tap on that? Uh, you know, and then it's very, very important. I think we actually offer the training. I keep emphasizing education and training, partly because even with governments, even with investors, even with family offices, uh, there's still a very lack of knowledge. You know, investment is not flowing so much at the moment. Uh, because, of course, people are nervous. There's uncertainty in the marketplace. But we can improve that by providing, uh, you know, information, data, using technology to do that. Uh, and I think that's where the power, power comes in. Let's not forget also about our, our small businesses. Uh, you know, I'm very passionate about small businesses and entrepreneurs. Uh, most of our women around the world, especially in emerging markets, are entrepreneurs. And they struggle to access finance. They struggle to get their voices heard. They struggle to, you know, uh, uh, to, to make their mark in the world. Technology can also help with that. Technology can help us to understand our economies a bit better, to understand how we can filter, uh, uh, you know, the, the needs that people need, especially SMEs who are suffering at the moment. A lot of SMEs are kind of closing shop because they don't have access to finance uh, or they cannot trade in certain markets. And this is what we want to change, you know, by providing a, a technology, by educating, by connecting them to new markets, very, very important. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. 
thank you so much any last final words from alam yeah uh, how women entrepreneurs can benefit from the digitalizing trend digitalizing is an enabler which helps business to jump over barriers and grow faster however the digitalizing divide which troubles many women entrepreneurs makes them hesitate to embrace the process but the, the uh, digital divide uh, which troubles many women entrepreneurs makes them hesitate to embrace the process i believe the economic pathway usually flow in the tracks of the role model and uh, mentors uh, although in recent years in kingdom of bahrain business women have entered many new uh, areas uh, such as fintech and logistics the, ma the majority of business women and uh, tend to start uh, uh, and buy businesses in sectors where women already have uh, presence like retail service businesses nails salons uh, daycare or professional services like PR, PR firms, uh, consultancy, to push digitalization, we need to encourage more discussion about the benefit and process that uh, can enable women run businesses to expand using technology. We need trend setting women to change the situation. Uh, tech won't have more women founder until there are more women founder in the leading technology company, tech companies. Technology is a gender gap of 21st century. In the past, we used to have barriers of finance and social acceptance for business women. Today, we have uh, government and banking support for all dreams, but we still need to dismiss till the access to technology and only we can lead the way to that goal. We also need to focus on future. Uh, there is a growing silver economy uh, globally, which will cater the needs of older citizens. And research says that this will be digitalizing, sustained leisure and uh, willing, uh, well-being, health and nutrition, uh, finance and transportation, uh, robotic and games, smart homes, uh, housing, and ETC. The opportunities are unfolding and women entrepreneurs must break the mold and enter these fields. Thank you very much. That, thank you, Alam. With that space, we are actually very end of our session. Thank you so much for giving your precious time and giving us so many valuable words. Hopefully, our audience got to know about pivoting and digitizing their business models from you guys. So would you like to thank our audience? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to our panelists. To all our audience, those who have joined us live and through our session, I would like to thank all of your patience. So, key takeaway from our session is that while we are having pivoting and digitizing the business model, you have to think about training, education, and create a culture and give a good value to the customer experience. If you can match all these things, you will. Have good business model that you need to keep sustainability and survive in the market. So thank you so much. Hope to